I'm one of the party chiefs in SDP, a fervent lover of Shegwoni and his uh, ambition as a new governor of Ekiti State. In the last three or four years, I've been living in Okemesi and using that opportunity to know my people and to understand their needs politically. So, uh, yes, I've started a journey with Engineer Shegwoni because I believe in him. How did your path cross with that of Shegwoni? I didn't meet Engineer Shegwoni when he was in his first term. I was in the US. But about the time his term was closing, I mean, due to the court case, I met him in Abuja. He came to do a presentation on 133 KVA um, electricity. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine invited me to be in the audience. That was my first time of meeting him. I didn't meet him personally. It was not until after he left government that I went to visit him through another, a friend of mine that died recently, Professor B. Ramola, introduced, introduced me, to, me to him. And we, I found out that I just got along with him and since then we became friends. That was shortly after he left government. That was, I believe, 2011, 2012, something like that, yes. And we've been friends and we've been associating since then. And I was one of those people, hopefully, I think I'm, I was one of the people that came to him the moment he moved back to PDP. I came to him and I told him that, hey, Excellency, if you are planning to run, I certainly will support you. And uh, since then, I've not turned back. I've been with him. What was your impression at the presentation you spoke about where you met him, uh, saw him at a distance for the first time? Let me say this. Um, he wasn't the one doing the presentation. Um, some Nepal officials came to do the presentation. But I found, I mean, I looked at his demeanor and I looked at the way he reacted to things. I felt he, he presented like a very intelligent person. That impressed me. And then one little thing happened. Um, he, after the presentation and the Nepal officials were leaving, he told, I heard him saying to one of his officials to give those people some money, maybe to just trans transport or some, something like that. And one of them standing close to me made a comment and said, can you imagine this governor? We went to Oshun State, we were giving two million. He's asking them to give us is mentioned the amount. And that sort of impressed me because I felt that this is a man who is very prudent with our money. That was the second attraction. One is the minor, and then secondly, the way I felt he was managing the, the managing the resources. That was very impressive for me, particularly. So those were the attractions. And then by the time I was introduced to him officially by my friend, and we sat for like one hour, 30 minutes to one hour, and started exchanging ideas, I knew it was my man. It gave me a different impression about politicians, Ikiz people, and all the rest of that. I saw him more like the... He represented the picture of Ikiz people that I used to know growing up. And he sort of... It just made him very attractive to me in terms of uh, friendship. The other thing is this. I personally like to have people I want to call my leader as somebody I can emulate. Shegun comes across to me like somebody who has a lot of virtues of what a gentleman should be, or what I'm expecting of a politician, being truthful, being, being transparent, and being ready to, to show that they really are. Because there's a saying that you should not only be honest, but you should be seen honest. What attracts me to him is the quality of the man. For instance, I'm one of the people putting together his manifesto for this campaign. Some of the people wrote, some of the things written in there, he looks at it and saying, oh, remove that. I'd rather promise less 
can do more. In other words, people who are writing the characters were oh, like almost like saying, I'm going to build a castle in the air. And he just right off the bat told them that, listen, I just want, I don't want to put things that don't look real. So in a way, you can see the integrity right there. Another opportunity I've had with him is when we were going to go into a, a coalition with the with other, the other uh, party, the campies. What I was hoping he would do was that he would take the platform that we had and go and insist on us using that. In his characteristic way, he said, listen, let's go there Let's present our case. Let the other people present their case. Whichever one, with the, with the superior argument, should, they should consider the final decision. And I looked at him as somebody who you actually can discuss with, and the better argument wins. So there are a lot of other, other such situations where I've seen him in action. And it sort of makes me believe that this kind of person you can work with, and what he needs is actually uh, the best hand in it and the best argument and to make sure that whatever he's going to do is done based on uh, the right decisions rather than my decision I want to do this is a we person not an I person and that sort of strikes a strong note for me and it tells me that we can achieve a lot if we work together another point the uh, reason is that he left many uncompleted projects in 2010 how else would you have done it if 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 the court says leave there's no other way indeed in the manifesto that we were talking about that i mean the manifesto i mentioned earlier one of the things he has there listed is to complete those projects that were not completed because it's obvious that wherever he left those things are where the other two governors that have gone coming after him left it so one of the important one of the priorities that he has there is to complete those projects again like i said if the court says leave really the time is not yours at that point there was, there's nothing you could have done you couldn't have done anything better part of the campaign of calumny is that he intends to scrap the the new university at Isha and we may also revert the University in Ikere to a college of education. Do you have a response to this? From my uh, Chief Yagoni has actually responded to that already and he could even included the LCDAs if you remember. How do they know what I intend to scrap? What I intend to scrap? How do they know it? Have I talked to them about it? Let me tell you, these people don't know what to say. They will say, he will do this. Not an account of what he has done. Who was governor that scrapped things? I was governor for three and a half years. I did not scrap a single thing. I kept the assets and liabilities of government and improved on whatever it was. I didn't scrap a single institution. Or if, if anybody has a record of counseling, council university, council this, council that, it is they. Now they are saying what they have done, Shego and you can say, said, yeah, you will cancel the College of Agriculture. And I said, I am not they. I am schooled in a development oriented discipline that makes me know that once you plant, removing is not necessary. You can challenge them. You can tell them, look, I challenge you, be viable then the responsibility will be for them to become viable. Not, I can't do this, I can't do that. It is shydishness. 
I will not cancel anything, no, and I'm saying it now. And it's not because I won't vote, because it is not right to do, and I won't do a wrong, mainly. I won't cancel anything, but I will challenge them. There's nothing more to add. If we think of, if we think of him as an, a man of integrity, then people should not worry about that. He is a development-oriented person. He would rather add more to the development than remove. And uh, really, it's, it makes no sense for anybody to... We want this to look at his antecedent. He, I remember he mentioned that when he came in, there were some, some things his predecessors had in there. I believe it was, uh, it was Payoshi that came before him here. Yeah. That I did not scrap. I can't remember the details, but I remember he mentioned that he doesn't have the history of scrapping anything. And looking at the, the, the level of integrity he has, I do not doubt him. Incidentally, the LCDA, I was for Kimesi Idoile, I was fully involved in setting up, I mean, uh, putting together the building. I was actually, I, I was the secretary to the committee. And uh, I was fully involved. So I can call, I can almost say it's like my baby. I'll be one of those people that will be very unhappy if we have to scrap it. And I know that he's not going to scrap it. If anything, we will, we will sit down and look at how best to make it uh, less uh, font draining and be more so that whatever comes in will actually go towards the programs of the government rather than scrap it. Besides, LCDA is, LCDA just like the LGAs, Shegoni believes in the autonomy of local governments. So he's going to keep that autonomy. And if anybody's going to scrap it at all, it will be a decision outside of his own purview, as far as I'm concerned. To those who feel that second term governors don't do well and they feel the same will happen uh, to him, what is your uh, take? Historically, we've seen that. So those who said that, they are not speaking out of point. But the one, one thing we have to understand about these individuals is that I don't believe they ever had a plan coming to government to start with. I think they just saw second time as part of a process of uh, being in government. So first time they would, be, they would move and behave as if they, they really care for the people. And then second time they practically are saving money for other things. But in his own case, like I mentioned, he's a development oriented person. If you look at the manifesto he has, he has developed, you will see that there are a lot of development that he's looking at. He's looking at how to improve the IGR, not by taxing the people, but by bringing in things, creating an enabling environment for business to thrive, working on infrastructures, working on light and electricity and all the rest of that, creating um, some industrial, uh, industrial layouts in several places to encourage businesses. So for me, looking at the kind of plan he has and the kind of people he has assembled around him, I think it will be out of place to think that he will come and just do nothing. He's coming in fully armed to change the face of Ekiti. And I'm believing strongly that if Ekiti allows him, he's going to do that. He, he doesn't have any plan to... Indeed, he's looking for legacy projects. I mean, he wants to put legacy projects down, as, as, more like a foundation that somebody else can build upon. So it's far from his plans to come and not perform. He's coming to perform. Another aspect of the campaign of calumny against him is that he doesn't trust people around him or who have come from other uh, groups. The second part is that he himself had conceded or had accepted that he may not win the coming election. That he bent wow. his mind to somebody. 
I'm one of those close to him. So I'll ask, I'll ask that second part first. If you ever had that kind of mindset, I believe I'm one of those who will know, who, who will, even if I don't, I'm not the first to know, I will be amongst those who will know. The, the man is upbeat in terms of winning. He's so upbeat about the thought that he's going to win. He believes he's going to win. We believe he's going to win. Indeed, we are assured that he's going to win because we look at the movements in the kitty. We look at the, uh, the kind of uh, energy that the youth are putting to back him up. There's no other place to go but up for him. I expect he will win. He knows he's going to win. He has never told anybody that he's not going to win. And uh, he's, not, he's not about to tell anybody that he's going to win because all the indices are showing that we're going to win. So it is not true. And the issue of trust? Trust. I'm surprised people are even saying that. I'm surprised people are coming up with such stories. I don't know how they came about it. And I don't know how to even address that. Because most of the things we are doing, we are doing collectively as a group. Shengoni is not the one writing his uh, manifesto or the one planning his campaign or the one holding the money. So how can somebody, if he doesn't trust somebody, then he should be holding all those things. No, he's not. He trusts people. He entrusts people into things. And that's how our organization is running. We have been, people are entrusted to things and they're working. There are those who also feel that SDP is too young a party in the state to win the coming June 18 election. Um, if you look at it from normal, I mean, from what you might call normal way parties develop, you might say SDP is still very young. But the truth is, we've been fortunate to have as our bedrock of members, people who left PDP, APC out of anger. What we have created in SPDP, if I can say we, what SDP has done is to just create a platform. Indeed, I almost, sometimes I want to say Pierre Moni's platform is more of a street platform. What I mean by street platform is a platform constituted by youth who are saying you must run. Market women who are saying you must run. Retirees that are saying you must run. Teachers that are saying you must run. So even if we put uh, a platform down called Shegoni of a uh, Shegoni party or Frog Party or whatever party, people will come on board. So SDP at this particular moment is a, is is going against the grain. I mean, going against the. The, the, uh, what people understand of parties is phenomenal. The growth is phenomenal. And if people are the ones that will vote, then I don't know what anybody means by SDP is too young. Yeah, it's, young, it's a young party, so to say. Of course, SDP is not even young. SDP has been since other parties have been. But it's now becoming more popular because of Chegoni's movement. And Chegoni's movement is taken from existing parties, PDP, APC, and some other parties that have come because they see that Chegun is going to make it. Yes, you might say we are young, which we are not, but young in the sense that young are coming in to vie for positions and become very visible, maybe, but we are working. We are working very hard. And um, the only thing I can say is victory, not more. How do you see the crisis at the national level of the SDP affecting your party in the United States, and especially the election? Um, one thing you need to understand is that, one, I don't think it's going to affect us greatly. The other, but much more importantly, most parties are, there's always one litigation or the other in parties. Um, APC, they have several litigations. Um, PDP, up and down. I mean, they have, I mean, it's back and forth. The important thing is that we are focused. Our election is coming up June 18th. 
and uh, we can't afford to even be distracted by whatever is happening around us our focus right now is to win and uh, yes we need the national chairman to win no doubt but um, the crisis as far as i know is something that they can solve pretty quickly and um, so i don't expect it to affect us so we should be fine <laughs> To our electorate, I am pleading that you vote for Chief Shemoni because he's the only candidate that can change the face of Egypt from what it is now to the better. <laughs>